Hey guys, welcome to Safi Mixed. In this video, you will learn about the properties of bound states. From the video part one on bound states, we know that for a bound particle, the one dimensional potential V of x has at least one minimum such that the total energy E of the particle is bounded in the way V minimum is lesser or equal to E and E is lesser or equal to V1 and V2 where V1 and V2 are the asymptotic values of the potential on the left side and to the right side respectively. If you are not well clear about this concept, I would suggest you to watch my video part one on bound states. Okay, due to this boundary condition on total energy E, the acceptable wave function is solutions to the time independent Schrodinger equation correspond only to discrete energy eigenvalues. So, the first property of bound state is that the energy spectrum of bound states is discrete. The second property of bound state is that the energy eigenfunction of bound states in one dimensional potential are non degenerate. To prove this property of bound states, let us consider two energy eigenfunctions psi 1x and psi 2x with same eigenvalue capital E. <clears throat> From time independent Schrodinger wave equation for wave function psi 1, I can write the Schrodinger wave equation through this one equation and I can take the, the energy eigenvalue to the right side of the equation and can rewrite equation into this form and obviously taking minus h bar square divided by 2m to the right side, I can further simplify the equation into this final form. Similarly, I can put the Schrodinger wave equation for the second wave function psi 2 into this form as well. Now, dividing both sides of equation 1 and 2 with psi 1 and psi 2, we can further modify them into this form where I have taken psi 1 to the left side, to the denominator on the left side and similarly I have taken psi 2 to the denominator on the left side for equation 2 and I am representing these equations with 3 and 4. If we compare equations 3 and 4, the right sides of both equations are same. Therefore, from the comparison, we can construct equation 5. Now, if I multiply to both sides of this equation, psi 1 times psi 2, we can further modify these equations into the form psi 2 times d squared psi 1 over dx squared equals psi 1 times d squared psi 2 divided by dx squared and taking the right side to the left I can equate them to 0 I can equate the difference to 0 as in equation 6 now now equation 6 can be put into another total differential into the form of derivative of psi 2 times d psi 1 over dx minus psi 1 times d psi 2 over dx and the whole equal to 0. And if you are unable to follow this relation directly, just open up the brackets and apply the product rule of differentiation to each term inside the brackets, you will end up with equation 6. Now obviously integration of equation 7 can straight away be written as psi 1 time psi 2 times psi 1 prime minus psi 1 times psi 2 primes equal to c where c is an integration constant and I have written prime for the derivative of wave function that is psi 1 primes equals d psi 1 over dx and psi 2 prime equals d psi 2 over dx. 
since the wave functions must vanish at the boundaries that is psi 1 equals psi 2 equals 0 therefore the constant in equation 8 must be 0. So with this substitution equation 8 takes the form psi 2 times psi 1 prime minus psi 1 times psi 2 prime equal to 0. And if we divide this equation by psi 1 times psi 2, we can rewrite this into the form psi 1 prime divided by psi 1 equals psi 2 times divided by psi 2. Since now the wave function are separated at one side we have psi 1 and at the other side we have psi 2. Therefore, integrating this equation straight away gave us log of psi 1 equals log of psi 2 plus log of c. Here again c is an integration constant taking log of psi 2 to the left side of the equation first and then applying the uh, difference formula of logarithm I can write them as the log of the ratio of the two wave function equal to log of c and dropping down or exponentiating both sides I can straight away write psi 1 divided by psi 2 equals c which can further be written in the form of psi 1 equals c times psi 2. Since c is a constant therefore it can straight away be absorbed into the normalization constant and therefore we can write psi 1 equals psi 2. Equation 11 means that the two wave functions are identical and there exists no degeneracy in the wave functions of bound states for a one-dimensional potential. The third property in the wave functions of bound states is the number of nodes. With the help of the oscillation theorem, it can be proven that the ground state wave function is non-zero everywhere except at the boundaries, which means that the ground state wave function has no node. In addition to the boundaries, the first excited state becomes zero at one more point in the region. In other words, the first excited state has one node. Similarly, the second excited state has two nodes and so on. In general, the nth wave functions, that is psi n of x, of the nth bound state vanishes n times in the bounded region and therefore has n nodes.